Küçükü tüt yaş kırdı. Do you have any idea who is looking after your children now? Balların ne bir hüşefkat, ballar yaşlıysın namedi ki, daraltam kap ket geldi ki ne olur. In more than 60 interviews. Where are they now? We hear one enduring question. Like thousands of Uyghurs, Muslims from China's western region of Xinjiang, Abdurrahman Toti now lives in Turkey. Three years ago, his wife Perida took the children on a short trip back home to see the grandparents. He's heard nothing from them since. Then, earlier this year, he found something online. He's certain it's his son Abdulaziz in an orphanage speaking not in Uyghur, his mother tongue, but in Chinese. Abdurrahman's wife has been swept into the vast network of highly secure facilities that China has been building right across Xinjiang. Inside, the Uyghurs, the Kazakhs and other Muslim groups who have their own distinct languages and culture are being taught to learn Chinese and to love the Communist Party. But now the BBC has new evidence of a systematic attempt to control and influence their children too. Giant new schools Many with huge dormitories have been springing up almost as fast as the camps. This kindergarten, according to state media, has more than a thousand children, some as young as three. This one, another kindergarten, sleeps hundreds. And this is what China calls a protection center. More than a hundred are being built. Together, they'll hold 10,000 children. The authorities seem to want to keep them hidden. We find one street blocked by the police. Reports say there's a school here for 2,000 children of detained parents, but we're not allowed to get any closer. This kindergarten for the children of detainees has barbed wire, cameras and signs that say only Chinese should be spoken. <laughs> And we film this giant camp. While the parents are held here, their children are here in a kindergarten built close by. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Senior officials deny that family separation on such a scale will cause lasting psychological damage. <laughs> What is happening to those children where extended families have been taken into the camp system? But such cases are not hard to find. Do you know where your children are now? In Turkey, a place to where so many Uyghurs have fled, 
We hear again and again of whole families being targeted back home by the Chinese authorities for almost any expression of Uyghur identity or faith. Who is looking after the children? The, uh, the three children at home, do you know where they are now? Do you know who's looking after them? Your husband was arrested? Amina Wyatt runs a clothes shop, carving out a new life in Turkey. But she's without her stepdaughter. Akida, whose father is in a camp, now appears to be in a boarding school and is seen wearing traditional Chinese costume. If you could send a message to Akida today, what would you tell her? Buried deep on the Chinese internet, there's evidence to suggest there is now a deliberate policy to separate children from their roots. I have uncovered very detailed evidence of how both students and teachers in these boarding schools, if they fail to speak Chinese to each other, uh, there are severe penalties. Other documents found by Mr. Zenz mention psychological counselling for the children of parents taken to the camps and the need to make up for the lack of family love, suggesting China is all too aware of the impact. Since the camps were built, he's found an 82% jump in kindergarten places and by even more in areas of Xinjiang where Uyghurs are the majority. China's national increase was just 8%. The Xinjiang government is attempting to gain full control over the young generation, to literally raise a new generation that has been cut off from original roots, from religious beliefs, from cultural knowledge even from their own language. Uh, I believe the evidence really points what we must call uh, cultural genocide. Tayr, Qaysar, Kausar. Orozjan, Ekinji Balam, Orozjan. Khalida Akit Kankurza now lives in Kazakhstan. Last year, her family members back in Xinjiang were all taken to the camps, leaving her 14 grandchildren parentless. So she phoned their village official. Kalida can't look for her family. Anyone returning to Xinjiang is likely to end up in the camps. So we decide to look for her. Yeah, Renza Gemma. We find the family home locked and deserted. We call the village official. But he hangs up on us too. Others also give us permission to search for their missing relatives. But we find only signs of a giant vanishing and the shattering of countless families. <laughs>